Hello and welcome to PAVE. My name is Amber and I would like to show you some of the basic functions of PAVE. But what does it stand for? PDF Accessibility Validation Engine. You can use this online tool to make your PDFs accessible to the blind and the visually impaired. So let's get started by clicking Start PAVE. The first thing we have to do is upload our file. And we do so quite simply by clicking on Upload File. Choosing the file we'd like to open and clicking open. And you can see that on the right hand side the pages are being displayed that have been recognised. You can also see on the left hand side in the green field that there has already been an automatic correction. 98 issues have already been remedied. This means that some things have already been sorted out so that our PDF is accessible to the blind and the visually impaired. But there are still some things left for us to sort out. We can see the first thing here in the red field where it says title missing. We can sort this out by changing to the properties tab or quite simply by clicking edit properties. Then we can give our document a title by clicking and entering the name we'd like our document to have. Here let's go with example PDF. Oh there we are. We can then choose the language we'd like to have for our document and here we'll go with English. The following fields, author, subject and keywords are optional ones and you can choose to enter information here if you wish, but otherwise click save. Now that we've done that we can see that the background behind document properties has turned from red to green. So that's sorted but we still have something else to look at. It says here that some content is not tagged. So if we scroll down and click here or of course move to issue details, then we can sort that out. At the top we have an explanation with some different colours. We can see them when we scroll down here. Things that are green have been tagged and things that are red have not. And that's the issue because everything needs to be tagged and everything needs to be tagged correctly. So it seems that on page one something has not been tagged at all. This is our apple. By moving to the reading order tab we can then see the things that have indeed been tagged but may not have been done so correctly. So let's take a look at how we can sort out what's left. And the best way to do this is to start at the top and work down making sure that things are tagged as you'd like them to be read out. So we can see here that this paragraph seems to be numbers. And if we look across we can see that it's highlighted at the top these numbers, therefore, seem to be something that decorate the page, that are not relevant to the screen reader and to the listener at the end, so that needs to be changed. To do so, we can click the box and the second one, thanks to the multi-editing function, and change the settings. So if we click on this tag with a pencil on it, we'll find that we can change the tag setting. Now, a paragraph is text that would be read out, and we don't want this to happen, so we have to tell the system that it's not relevant and tag it as not relevant. Save. So these things have now disappeared from our list and the thing that we have at the top is a heading one. And that seems to be perfectly fine because that's the general title of the document. Then we have a paragraph and again, so far, so good. So let's take a look at our next headings. We see here that we have a heading one. But actually, that's not as important as the one at the top. It's another level down and should be heading two. Let's tick the box. And we see that further down there is another one that's very similar. And by ticking these boxes next to the heading ones, we can change them all to heading two in one go by using the tab and pencil at the top. It's important to use this one and not the one by the side because this one would change only this entry. There is a faster wanted to change all of the heading ones in one go, we can use the filter function. At the top you can see a down arrow and if you click on it, a pick list will appear and you can choose to select all of the heading ones in one go by clicking on heading one. So here for instance we have all of the heading ones left in the document. And again there is a faster way to do this, rather than using the pick list you can also choose to use the keys on your keyboard. These are shortcuts. So the heading one we have displayed here is possible if you click on 
the key with the number one on it. If we click on number two, the display changes to those that have already been tagged heading two. So let's go back to the heading ones that we'd like to change and tick the checkbox at the top left to highlight all of them. We now see that the first heading one is one that we would actually like to keep like that. So to make sure it doesn't change, we can take out our tick and then proceed to change the others by clicking the icon at the top. We change the rest to heading two and click save. We have now successfully changed our heading once and to get back to the overall list, we can use the shortcut A to show all of our entries. We've now presented some of the shortcuts available, but there are more. If you navigate to help slash frequently asked questions at the top, you can find more information. And one of these is how do I use PAVE with the keyboard? And if you click this option, all of the other shortcuts are displayed for your convenience. Okay, so that has changed. And if we go over these entries, we see that there's a paragraph there and another there. That's perfectly fine. This one has to be read out first. You can see that it's split text across two columns. This left paragraph first, then the one on the right, perfect. Our heading two that we've changed and the paragraph. The next entry is heading two. And you see that we've skipped the apple. So the system was quite right when it showed us under issue details that the apple had not been tagged. So that's what we need to do next. To tag our apple, we move our cursor across to the image and click once. We then have a very similar window to the fall where we can change the automatic paragraph entry to figure. By clicking on figure, we change the rest of this image slightly. We can select a caption in this case, we have no caption, but what we do need to do is give the screen reader something to tell the listener what it is that the figure represents. In this case, our figure is a red apple. So we enter that here. Save. Now that we've tagged our apple, we can see that it appears in the list. Figure, red apple, that's the text we entered. The next thing we have in the list is heading two. That's one of the heading ones we changed earlier, followed by paragraph. But we can see on the right hand side that this isn't a paragraph, it's a list, a bulleted list. And the second part belongs to it as well. The easiest way to sort this out is to delete the two items. So we click them on the left hand side. And as it applies to both selected items, we use the rubbish icon at the top. And our two entries are gone. Now, of course, we need to put them back in, but with the right type of tag. To do this, we go over to page two and highlight one bullet point at a time. It's important when you do this to get the bullet point as well as the text that goes with it. And release. Then on the left hand side, we can select the type of tag we want to give this part of the text. And of course, it's a list. This green area shows us that the first part of the bulleted list is done and we need a new entry for the second one. We drag and you can see here that the first part of the bullet has been selected but we need to catch the bottom. There we are, and that's our second entry. We have no caption for this list but you could enter one if you wanted to. So that's it, save. We've correctly tagged our list, but we can't see it at the moment. There we are, it's been zapped to the bottom of the current page. By clicking on it, and dragging it up, and dropping it in the right place, we can sort things out again. So then it will be read out in the right order by the screen reader. Our next entry is a paragraph, but again we can see that it's not really a paragraph. This is the first row of a table. To sort this table out, we need to delete all of the entries that correspond to it. So we have this first paragraph, let's click on that, and the next one, and again, 
and this one takes us to the end. Okay, so to delete these entries, we click on the rubbish bin at the top. So they're gone. But now, of course, we have to put it back in. So where's our page two here? To highlight or mark a table with the correct tags, we hover over the first entry. This is the top left entry. Of course, we have a space here, but that's not a problem. Go along to the next one and click. And we tag this as a table. So you see here the information is given. The first thing we do is adjust the number of rows. And here we have four in total and columns on this occasion, five. We have the option here to tick whether or not the first row contains headers for the table columns. In our case, it does. And the same again for the column. So our calories entry has been zapped into the first cell. But where it needs to be is next to it to the right. That's not an issue because whichever cell is highlighted with a dark blue is where your next entry will go when clicked upon. So we have this second cell from the left highlighted in dark blue and click calories and our calories entry goes to the right place. Now the dark blue square is to the right of that and of course that's where we want to have fat so we click it followed by proteins and sugar. You can see now that the dark blue field has gone to the next row which is perfect because that's where we need to put in banana. And our numbers, one after the other, simply by clicking them. And this continues down the rows. Just click one cell after the next. So those are our cell entries. What else? A caption. On this occasion, we do have a caption. So we can click Add Caption. And highlight the one we have on the right-hand side. Remember to make sure you get all of the text elements in this caption and then click save. You can see that it has appeared on the left here and you can edit it once again should anything have gone wrong. We're finished with our table, so let's save it. We've now completed our tagging for page two and we can see that our entries, the heading, the list and the table look fine. But just to make sure that all of the tags all right, we need to go back to issue details and see what that looks like. So we see that for page two, although the reading order looked fine, we have 24 remaining issues that need fixing. These are listed below. Apparently content is not marked. If we click on the arrow onto the right, we'll navigate to the second page and we can then hover over the list and see that the reason that these items are not displayed in the reading order is because they're not important at all. They're just empty fields that don't need to be read out by the screen reader. But of course, if we leave them in, they might get in the way. So if we scroll over to the right hand side and highlight our page, this will capture all of those items in one go. And we can tell the system that they are not relevant by changing the tag to not relevant and save. So let's say you were finished at the end of page two and you wanted to save your PDF. To do this, you would go up to the manager at the top and click on the arrow. You have the option here to download the file. So click download and you receive information. On this particular occasion, we are notified that there are 30 issues still left to be sorted out. But of course, these belong to the following pages after the first two that we dealt with. Under usual circumstances, yours would be fine by now. You have the option to enter some feedback by clicking and typing text and to provide an email address if you so wish. You can also choose to click this checkbox if you want to, to say that developers may store and analyze the document to improve PAVE in the future. So once you've filled in the details you want to provide, you click yes, download the corrected file. At this point, you can choose where to save your file. But just so you know, if you happen to want to change anything else, your document will remain on the PAVE server for the following three weeks. This only works if you don't delete your cookies. You have now successfully rendered your PDF accessible to the blind and the visually impaired. Thank you for your interest in PAVE. 
developed by the ICT Accessibility Lab of the Zurich University of Applied Sciences in collaboration with the Swiss Federation of the Blind and the Visually Impaired. Goodbye.